And we see players walking out onto court. And you talk about the challenging conditions for Jesse Pagula, for Iga Sviantek. And we wondered how she'd manage the pressure, what she needed to do coming into this event, into these WTA finals, knowing she needed to win five straight. She needed to not have Sabalenka make the final. Yeah. And look what she did. <laughs> Prevented Sabalenka from questions earlier this year. She's answered them loudly and had just a another remarkable season and you just get the sense that she is nowhere near done she is still improving she is still so motivated still so much focus on every aspect of her game she's a special champion and we've let had, loose now we, we've had special <laughs> champions yeah. but you know the, the winning just seems to breed the desire for more instead of the pressure and, and feeling like you have enough and i think for sviantek it's one of the things we love spare a thought for jessica pagula who didn't play her best tennis but a lot of it had to do with this woman in front of us and how well she started it gives us a chance presenta la cúspide del tenis mundial logrando ser La jugadora número uno del mundo y qué mejor que en México. Winning the WTA finals in Cancun, very tough conditions down there, as you guys know already, but she didn't drop a set throughout the whole tournament and uh, got her revenge, if you will, against Sabalenka in the semifinal. Um, prevented Sabalenka from getting to the final, which, which she needed to happen to have a chance on ret retaining the number one world ranking before the end of the year, and that's exactly what she did. And uh, so she was really only number two in the world for a very short time. I think maybe a month or two, even shorter than that. And now she's back to being number one. So kudos to her. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying uh, this shirt. I, I get a lot of comments on this shirt sometimes. Uh, you, you guys call it a sweatshirt, but I just call it like a long sleeve shirt. Uh, always supporting Poland. And, you know, I'm already thinking about uh, when Sviantek is going to play again. Um I, I doubt it'll be any time uh, before, uh, I would guess probably mid-December, there'll be an exhibition match or two in there, Oppor opportunity to, of course, make some more money, uh, maybe in, in Dubai or something like that. And then I guess the season will kick off probably in January. So not that long of an off-season, but um, definitely something uh, to miss. We'll miss a lot of tennis Um you know, even even though tennis is not going to be on for the next uh, month and a half or so, uh, I fully anticipate continuing this Sviante coverage, uh, posting videos here on Best Muscle Video on YouTube. So keep tuning back in. I anticipate uh, putting one up every single day, uh, even though we're going into the off season. So make sure you, you make sure you subscribe. Uh, we're recording right now in Dallas, Texas, uh, over here in the United States, and. Um, you know, I was thinking a little bit too after the match was over on, wow, uh, uh, I hope Sviante can keep this momentum up. Um, she was kind of like this throughout the year, kind of like up and down, in my opinion. Um, in the Grand Slams, uh, she was fantastic. Uh, of course, won the French Open and then uh, did kind of well, uh, in my opinion, in the other three Grand Slams. And uh, really cool to see Chris Everett on court today. Uh, giving the trophy to Sviantek, but as Jessica and Iga said, uh, not not an easy tournament uh, to play in as far as the con conditions go. And really, uh, respectfully saying, everything that went wrong in this tournament did go wrong as far as, um, you know, uh, the production of the tournament. So when you watch a tournament like the U.S. Open or, the, or Wimbledon, man, they make it look so easy with the production that they bring, how they introduce the players, how they get the players on and off the court. If there's 
you know, any weather issues. Of course, they have roofs over there on the main court. But um, uh, when you get to a city like Cancun, who's not respectfully not used to a, uh, an event like this, you're going to have some trouble. So you need some professionals who've been doing it for a long time. And uh, that's what you get with the Grand Slam. So, um, you know, the WTA finals, inter interestingly enough, I mentioned this several times uh, on this channel, but uh, last year, uh, WTA finals were in Fort Worth, which is about half an hour from here. I'm so sad I didn't go to that tournament last year. Who knows if North Texas, which is where Fort Worth is, will ever see another uh, WTA tournament uh, in our Metroplex. But um, if we do, it would be so, be so thankful if we did. Um, so yeah, uh, Sviantec, uh, the season is over. But the coverage is not going to end. I'm going to do my best to put on some good, uh, uh, interesting things about Iga Świątek and Poland right here. Best Muscle video on YouTube. Please like, subscribe, comment. Uh, there's even a thanks button on the bottom right of the your screen. Um, it's on YouTube. It just says thanks. It's going to be on your phone. It's going to be on the computer. You might have to click a drop-down menu. And if you want to send me some money that way, please do so. Um, this is, uh, a passion of mine and it's been a lot of fun, uh, this year. Um, you know, other players that I, I like a lot are, um, uh, Robachina. I uh, really like seeing her play and, um, uh, she's, she does give <laughs> Shviantek a lot of trouble. Uh, I love Pagula. Um, and, uh, I actually do like Sabalenka as well. So, uh, Sabalenka was, uh, kind of a favorite of mine. Um, I know, I know a lot of people don't like her. They call her scream Lanka because she screams so much, but uh, a lot of fun to see them. And then, um, I feel like I'm missing a couple out, uh, Coco Goff, uh, she's our, our American here in our country. And, um, I like her as well. Um, but I don't like her as much as the sub language of the Shviantek. So, um, I don't know why, uh, <laughs> but, um, um, as far as the speedsters on court, on court though, uh, the quickness. You got to get that to Sviantek and Goff. Uh, they're, they're so quick on court. Um, you know, I was reading uh, some comments as we uh, wrap up the year. I was uh, the comments that you guys leave behind below the video, and some people, a lot of people, bring up Ostapenko, uh, who just has Sviantek's number. Uh, Sviantek cannot beat Ostapenko, so it'll be interesting to see if uh, they play again next year, which I'm sure they will. Ostapenko versus Sviantek will be on our pins and needles on that one, hoping that Iga can somehow pull that out because she has not able, been able to do that, I think, ever. So um, kudos to Ostapenko for always having Iga's number. Well, let's wrap up. Um, another kudos, uh, another shout out to the shirt. Hope you guys are enjoying it. And um, we'll wrap this one up. Uh, but tomorrow, which is Tuesday here in the United States, uh, we're going to put up another Sviantek video. And I have no idea what it's going to be, but it's going to be something interesting. It's going to be something I put my time into. It's not going to be anything um, uh, lackluster, if you will. It's going to be something something good. So let me hop on the computer. Uh, WTA Finals, I'll upload this right now. Uh, it's Monday night right now in the U.S. Uh, God bless you guys. November 6, 2023. And uh, please uh, comment. I read, read all the comments. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. See you guys.